Hey there, it's Dr. Steve coming to you again from Elevate Sport and Spine. Um, I'm back here behind the camera today. Um, I just want to do a quick demonstration of how your shoulder works and why you may have pain, uh, particularly in the front of your shoulder, or why you might have limitations in uh, shoulder flexion or lifting your arm up overhead, uh, simply just based on your scapula position or your shoulder blade position. So this here is just kind of a weird mock-up of a shoulder blade. It would be the right one viewed from the side. So it looks kind of weird, but this little cup right here is the space where our humerus or our uh, arm bone kind of interacts with this. The important thing to look at for the rest of this demonstration is this space that exists in between here and here. This portion of the shoulder blade comes up and around and articulates with our, uh, our collarbone and allows us to have stability in through there. But what it does is it creates a small space where some of the rotator cuff muscles and also some of our pec muscles and things kind of come underneath here in order to allow us to have um, movement in our arms. So I also made this uh, humerus here, our arm bone, and this portion up here is the part that interacts with that little cup there, the ball and socket joint that you may be familiar with. And that's what allows our shoulder to kind of move in all the different directions that it moves. Um, so for uh, position's sake, we're gonna consider this to be kind of a fairly neutral position. Um, when we use our upper trap muscles or our levator muscles, our scapula will kind of come like this a little bit, as well as uh, pec muscles will wanna kind of pull it in this kind of upward position here like this. So this movement is kind of important. If you ever see people from the side and you see that they've got kind of a hunched upper back, their shoulder blades are probably more likely in this kind of a position here. The important thing is to think about that relative position as here. Um, so with a good neutral position, if I want to raise my arm up overhead, I should be able to come pretty far and I can even come just a little bit underneath this part, maybe, yeah, no worries. Um, I should be able to kind of come underneath there a little bit and to get my arm up overhead here like this. And you can see even that's a little limited just because I can't get the thing to go underneath there. This is not all drawn to scale, of course. Um, so if I do have a dysfunctional shoulder position where I'm kind of coming up and around here like this, and I have my arm still kind of hanging down to my side like it would neutral position, you can see that this space in between here and here starts to shrink a little bit compared to where it was when we were here. Much larger space in there which causes uh, more room for my tendons and things versus when I'm in this position where my shoulder wants to come up and forward I've got a little bit less space between here and here which causes uh, irritation and grinding on those same tendons we had mentioned earlier. The other thing that it will do is that it will kind of relatively limit how much shoulder flexion I can get. So if we go to about the same place I showed you on the other side if we zoom out you can see that the the change in that position is pretty significant. So before, when we had our shoulder in this position, I'll just show you real quick, we can get up to about here. And then again, if we start to tilt this thing forward, then we end up not being able to raise our shoulder quite as much because we end up running into things a little sooner than we would otherwise. So I hope that demonstration shows you the significance of your scapular position, uh, particularly how, how we relate to kind of elevation of the shoulder blade and how it can affect, you know, shoulder pain in the front by irritation of those tendons, as well as restriction and movement by running into uh, this kind of space a little sooner than we would otherwise. Um, if you have any questions about kind of how to get better about moving that shoulder blade. Um, I've talked about it a little bit in the past, but you can also always uh, contact me here at the clinic, but I hope that gives you a better idea of how we can use kind of these lower muscles here uh, to kind of pull our shoulder blade down and back and try and get it as much into this neutral position as we possibly can so that we have a lot of space here for all of our tendons and things and that we do have that freedom of movement, getting that arm up overhead there we go and that's kind of what we're looking for uh, if you guys do have any more questions about any of that stuff please do feel free to reach out to me here at the clinic and i'd be happy to answer any of them take it easy see you next time